Thank you so much for joining us. I have Eileen with me today, and we're going to be talking about transformation across the insurance industry, specifically focusing in on claims and policy administration life cycles. Before I get into the questions that I have for you, can you give everybody a quick introduction? So hi, everyone. Emma, thanks for having me today. It's always so good to see you. So I'm Eileen Potter. Um, I lead Abby's insurance practice. So I work with our prospects and customers on, you know, trying to help them with their process improvement projects. Great. Well, I appreciate you joining me and it's always a pleasure to team up, whether it's in, you know, working with our customers or with activities like this. Um, so I always like to start these interviews with something to make sure that everybody joining us is kind of level set and, and following along with the discussion. Mm -hmm. So to get us started, um, can you share a bit about maybe some of the challenges or obstacles that you hear carriers running into as they're looking at starting their digital transformation? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, in talking to clients and prospects, what I'm really hearing is that they're still trying to figure out how to sort through all of the options that they have. Um, there are a lot more than there used to be. And, you know, their focus for, for right now is, you know, they really want to make substantive changes to improve processes in all areas of their organization. And so, you know, as they try and sort it out, it's really understandable that it's kind of a struggle because, you know, at one point in the not so distant path, past, the path to change was really pretty well established. You know, you went through an RFP process, you chose a replacement core system for policy or claims or billing. You built a project plan and then you got ready for a multi-year implementation. Um, and so that's not how things are working right now. And, you know, what's top of mind for insurers you know, process improvements, you know, how to manage the increasing amounts of data that they have um, and figuring out, you know, how to get that information in the data to the people that need it to make timely decisions during the policy and claims life cycles. Great. And so I want to take a little bit of kind of looking at how to move past those challenges and how mm -hmm claims and policy management should be interacting with technology in order to actually make your transformation a reality. So to get started, I think maybe let's dive into claims a little bit. Can you give anybody watching some advice on maybe how to bring technology into the claims life cycle? You know, so I think, first of all, you need to look at how your processes are working today. I think, you know, clearly you need to understand what's going on in your with your systems now and with your employees now. You know, you know, when you think of, it's not just the claims transactions that have changed, you know, those are basically the same, but what's changed are, you know, customer service expectations, remote work. Um, those are the big things that, that carriers need to focus on, you know, when they're thinking about what technologies to use. It's not just about choosing the technology, it's about understanding the ecosystem that you have already where you need to make changes, which is, you know, comes into understanding your processes and how they're working today, and then going about, you know, figuring out the right technology, or even it might not be a specific technology process improvement, but what's going to, what's going to help, you know, improve claims, not just from ethanol, but through, you know, through, you know, all of the other processes, the interactions that you have, and then onto settlement. Wonderful. And so when we take a look then at policy administration, do you have other suggestions or other things that carriers should be thinking through on that side of the business? Absolutely. So, you know, this actually, the, this part of my thinking, you know, and what I'm seeing falls into claims too, where I always think it comes down to simple processes versus complex processes. So, you know, on the policy administration site, side, specifically to underwriting, if you have very simple underwriting, you, you know, that's pretty much a straight through process and you can use technology AI to really enable, you know, those transactions to move straight through, just like with claims, a very simple claim, you know, a windshield claim that can move straight through. But with, you know, when you think about complex underwriting, that's something that AI can augment, but you're still going to need a person 
just like with a claim, you know, so I think, you know, I think for all of your processes, you know, whether you're looking at claims or policy administration, you know, you need to look at the type of process and think about, you know, how you can use technology to really augment the work that your people are doing. You know, ultimately insurance is a decision, you know, based transactions. You have skilled people and they need to be able to make better, faster decisions throughout the policy and claims life cycle so you can have better outcomes. That augmentation versus just straight automation is something that I talk a lot about. Our goal within this industry isn't to replace people or have people lose exactly. their jobs. It's to focus their skill sets and their human abilities on the right activities and then automate the parts that they don't enjoy about their job anyhow. Exactly. Um, and I think right now, I was talking about this earlier this week with the, where our hiring landscape is and how difficult it is to find people being able to automate the undesirable parts of a job and bring someone in and tell them like, we have processes that will help you enjoy the work that you're doing and feel challenged by the work that you're doing rather than just pushing buttons is a huge exactly. differentiator right now. Well, and you know, people talk about customer service. And so, you know, obviously customer experience, you want to deliver that highest level of service throughout every, every interaction that you have with your customers. And so people think that that is just about a great app on your phone or a cool front end, you know, to enter something. And obviously that's important, but from my perspective, that's table stakes. You have to have that, but what's going on behind the scenes? So if a customer can submit a claim through a great app on their phone, or an agent can submit an accord form, you know, through, you know, a great web-based application, but behind the scenes, your underwriters and your adjusters don't have all the information they need to make those decisions, that claim is going to languish or that you're not going to be first to quote. And so it's, you know, it's it's absolutely, people talk about the great resignation. You want to keep your employees happy, but part of of, of that is for them to be able to, to give that level of service to their customers and the agents, because your agents are your customers too that you need. And technology can help that. You're so right. It's not about replacing, you know, it's about making things better. Well, and you also run the risk of frustrating people if you have a beautiful facade that makes them think you're this transformed organization <laughs> and they accept, expect that when they hit that button, things are going to start and that they're going to hear. They almost would be more patient with you if they had to fill out the piece of paper and send it in because they knew what to expect. But if you don't have the back end to, to support the front end, you're going to end up making people even more frustrated. No, that makes, so I thought about, um, what is it, you know, they talk about lipstick on a pig, but, <laughs> but about, you know, lipstick on, you know, it, it, it's digital lipstick on a legacy pig. I think I, I heard it. Yeah, I, heard I it do said, love that. I've, I've heard that saying before and it always cracks me up. Anytime I can get true. a really solid image like that in my mind, I'm a big fan. <laughs> well, but, 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 it, but it's true. And I think that you're so right because if everything is manual, the expectation is that it's going to be slow, but if you push a button and submit it, but on the back end, everything is a mess. Um, you know, that's, that's really going to to your customer your customer experience is going to take a, a big dive especially because the expectation has been set that it's going to be just digital from from end to end and i think that you know you know and going back to what i was talking about process you know and understanding your processes is it so it's not just about the front end it's about looking about what's going on behind the scenes and saying do you need rpa here is this a good place for it because if you just implement a technology without really understanding, you know, what is the outcome that you're looking for? What are the metrics? The likelihood is you're going to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you really need that end to end picture to really be effective with the transformation. Because, yeah, you could put in RPA over here and suddenly bury some other people downstream yes. and create more process bottlenecks for yourself. And I'm sure we could go on and on for many, many moons about all of this. And I'm going to take this opportunity to let everyone know that we will be doing this in person together um, in yes. San Diego for Dig In. And um, so that is December 8th through the 10th yes. in San Diego. So we will be there with the Abbey folks um, talking all about insurance and transformation. 
So anybody watching that's going to be there or be in that neck of the woods, let us know. We'd love to have a conversation with you and, and maybe show you some of Abby's um, Absolutely. tools as well while you're there. Um, but I also want to encourage everybody who isn't already to make your way over and then follow Eileen on LinkedIn. And you're always involved in great insurance panels and conversations about the industry. So people can stay up to date with that. And, um, you know, reach out to either one of us if you're interested in learning a little bit more about Abby and their solutions. We're happy to help point you in the right direction. But thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today and have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you so much. If you're looking for expert tips on how to get started with your transformation or looking to hone in on your approach, make sure that you subscribe to our channel to catch our weekly digital transformation talk series where we interview experts from around the world on how to make it happen.